Let me start recording this. Yeah, go on. Say again. I would have probably used my phone if it was up to me, but these professional folks over here. Yeah. Now you're, care of business. now you're a top contender. Things change. HD. <laughs> yeah. Better cameras. Better. Even get a mic. Yeah. So how does it feel to be talking to the, the biggest Drickus Duplessis fan base outside of uh, South Africa here? Oh man, absolutely amazing. It's, it's it's actually crazy to see. Um, you know, I've been a fan of your work for a long time because it's always been like every single fight. You're like, listen, how how does this guy keep winning? And you're like, I he's know. definitely I couldn't he's believe definitely it. losing this fight. And then you're like, holy shit, he won that fight yeah. again. And like, then obviously with the whole easy situation, that's where I was like, this guy, this guy's got my back. Even though you're like, listen, I think this guy's losing, but you know, <laughs> yeah. and. Can't argue with that. I've got to be real with who I... Th you were facing, like, Robert Whittaker in his prime. Like, I, how oh could God. I... You know what I mean? You know, if I was a betting man, I would have definitely put my money on him. Mm-hmm, mm hmm He's a legend If I didn't know what I know. Yep, yep. And it's not like he was, like, stagnating in his career either. He was, like, in his prime, coming off the oh, best man. performance against Marvin Vittori. And yet, yeah, still, geez. you somehow just chad your way through it and get it done somehow. Yeah, I don't out. know. <laughs> yep. what do you think about that what do you think about beating Whitaker like that's better than a lot of people don't even accomplish that in their career let alone a world title or anything like that like Whitaker's a big name top five middleweight of all time yeah 100% you're fighting a guy like Whitaker you know and obviously with this, the odds I think that made everything better if it, if it was a where it was like 50-50 but you know 32 pros uh, uh, they asked and 32 said Jiggis is definitely losing this fight and uh, you know that made made the victory a lot sweeter. Yeah, I wish I could have picked you, but man, he's I, he's so you know, good. That that whole like not you underdogs even the wrong term, just like completely yeah. counted out and coming there and then having the performance that I know I could, and um, you know getting it getting it done against a legend like like Robert Whitaker was was a testament for me, and it was it was a great. Good, probably the greatest moment in my career thus far, one hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent. Um. Am I in a world where beating Whitaker in the way that you did doesn't get you a title shot? I don't understand that whatsoever, like how there's even a conversation about this. Yeah, well, I mean, if I knew that, I would have fought a welterweight too, rather than then get my title shot. You know, that, sounds, okay. that seems a little bit easier. I would rather leave that next. Mm. I mean, and do you think it'd only be fair if Hamzat had to fight six weeks from now for and his was, title shot? That was shot? what I was going to say. Like, uh, I hope he has an amazing medical team because, you know, he needs to be recovered and uh, be able to fight in the next six to seven weeks. Yeah, yeah. It'd only be fair if that was the case, if they had him right back <laughs> into a training camp. Yeah, you know 100%. I mean? Yeah, okay. Well, it was, a, it was a decent performance from him against Usman, but do you think it was enough for him to uh, in any way be a threat? I think it was a division? decent first round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel, I feel, listen, obviously, both of them, you know, Kamara Usman, kudos to that guy. She's just stepping up, taking the risk like that, being on a two-fight losing streak, mm -hmm. and... Really showing up for the final. I mean, using the distance when you haven't had a training camp, only had 10 days, using the distance as your weapon, that's that's kind of crazy. Being able yeah. to go out there and, uh, and you know, if that fight was five rounds, he would have, I think he would have finished his one within the, yeah. maybe even the fourth round. But uh, that just shows you the, the, the caliber of fighter that Usman is uh, in terms of you know, the championship experience. And he's definitely one of the greatest fighters to ever fight in the, in the UFC. But, uh, you know, it comes out claiming the self-proclaimed boogeyman is not so boogie after all. Yeah. You know, if I was in there, it would have been, you know, maybe the first round. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure he, he could get me down. It's, it's fine. I don't, I'm not scared to get taken down because then he has to do with me on the floor. But, you know, it wasn't the highest pace of fights. And he was so tired and he was fighting a welterweight. On short yes, notice, like the guy would... came in on short notice and Hamzat's the one yeah, slowing I mean, down in the later rounds. big guy at all, especially at middleweight. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I feel I feel if if, if um, Hamzat's going to start dealing with the the top middleweights with that power, with the with the weight, it's not going to work out like that because he uses so much strength when he fights because he's used to being a weight bully and, and being able to use that power to beat welterweights. Yeah. But this is not, it's not going to work out like that because... At middleweight, he's, well, we don't know how he looks at middleweight because um, he only fights welterweights. But, um, uh, you know, I've, I've seen him. I've seen Gamzad. He's not a, he's not that big of a guy. Yeah, he's so like he's, a, he's a, he's a tall, a tall dude, guy. 
but he's not got like the frame. Yeah, like, he's the a shoulder dude, but he's not. He's not a thick guy. No. Yeah, he's not dense for the division. Is Listen, it? in in my opinion, I think Hamza can be very very glad that um that Paulo Costa pulled out of that fight. Okay, he can you be think, very glad because I think Costa would have had a better chance. I think Costa would have smoked him. Okay, why? Why do you think Costa would have done better? One hundred percent. Because yeah. I think I think um, to get Costa to the ground would have been uh, a lot harder. Not because of his racing that's good. I just think he's so much bigger and stronger than Kamara Usman that yeah. if he got that tired from racing with Kamara and just having back control, it wasn't even it wasn't even a scramble, and yeah. then having to deal with with the Costa in that second and third round, you know, because Costa, yeah, he gets tired, but he can bang the whole way through. Hmm. Yeah, so allegedly. I think it would have been interesting, oh. you know, the, the shot that he took from Gamora, if he had taken those shots by by Paulo Costa, it would yep. have been game over. Yeah. It's hard to overcome a momentum shift from Paulo rather than Kamaru Usman because he's more of a yes. snowball y type fighter. You know, if he gets ahead, yeah. it's hard to change it for sure. I'm 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 honestly I was I was I was really shocked. I didn't give Kamaru Usman like I thought if this fight seized the third round. Same. It would be, it would amaze me, and he showed up, damn. But yeah. uh, you know, it was it was good. You know, if that's the number one contender, but I'm very excited for what next me. <laughs> I mean, it's very uh, weird how some people get Usman week and a half's notice from welterweight on a silver platter, and others get Whitaker have to turn around six weeks afterwards. And I hear Hamza <laughs> has a hand injury as well, so I'm I don't know. It seems interesting. I feel like they're maybe like. Even Dana was talking about giving him some time and he needs to heal up and then he'll have his title shot. But seems a bit weird, the dynamic between the two. Don't you think? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, you know, for me, you know, I, I know Dana said like, you know, with with me, the same thing. He said, he said that after the fight, he said, listen, this guy needs to go and heal up and, you know, you don't know if he's injured. And he, he did give me that. He did give me that courtesy too. But up until I actually needed it, I really needed to get to heal up. And, yeah. Yeah. and the, the the thing is with the, with this whole thing, like, like I said, the UFC, they're going to be the UFC. Yeah. I'm not a matchmaker. I'm not a promoter. They, they're they going to do what's best for their business. And things aren't always fair. And uh, the fight game for sure not fair. Yeah. And uh, But that's not my responsibility. But we my make it fair. That's my responsibility with the fan base. We have yeah, to make that's it fair it. That's in it. the community. That's it. For my sure. responsibility is to take whatever is coming in and, and beat the shit out of it. <laughs> yeah, true, true, true. So how, how do we make this fair? Because I feel like right now with Hamzat Chimeo with his hand injury, you've got to get the next title shot in the middleweight division, 100%. Adesanya coming off a loss, wants some time off. It's you or no one. I think I think how we make this fair is uh, if Hamzat can't fight in seven weeks, yeah, um, I get the title shot again. I think that's the way 100%. to make it fair. And, um, you know, I have this weird feeling. I think it's going to happen that way. I think I'm fighting for the belt next. Um, yeah. Because if you, if it doesn't happen that way, well, I mean, I'm going to sit and sulk about it. But I'm not going to beg for a title shot. That's not, not what I'm going to do. I'm going to fight and win and beat people for a title shot. That's I'm going to beg for anything. But yeah. that's true. In a world where that oh, go on. And, the, and the and the injury and everything, I honestly feel that. No, it's going to come back my way. Yep. Yeah. In a world where logic doesn't prevail and everything's weird <laughs> and nothing makes sense anymore, what would be like the next best case scenario? Because I'm thinking Adesanya, UFC 300, co-main event, McGregor Chandler. That's like the next best thing. If again, that's, that's, that's logic what I'm doesn't mean anything. Too, uh, that was that was that was it. The, the first thing that I thought of when they started talking about now they're going to do the comes out contender. I just went, all right, well. The next big thing, which I believe a fight will be bigger in terms of numbers, is me versus Adesanya. Yeah. And I would love 100%. that fight. I would love that fight. But let him take his time off. And, uh, you know, for me, as a as a competitor, as a, as a fighter, yep. the having the world title is, is my priority. Yeah. Uh, that's a priority for me. But, you know, if that's not an option, beating Adesanya would be close second to that. <laughs> Yeah. We've been talking about this in my uh, community, how if you had to beat Adesanya to get a title shot, you would have had to have beaten two top five middleweights of all time before even getting to the title of the middleweight division, which would be absolutely crazy. That is kind of crazy, but you know, yeah. <laughs> this fight game is crazy. Yeah. You know, I know I 100% believe styles make fights. And if I could beat Whitaker, I can for sure beat Adesanya. Yeah. But 
enough about Adesanya and Shemayev and Whitaker. Sean Strickland is the champion of the middleweight division. And you said styles make fights. What did you think yes. of his uh, performance against Israel Adesanya? Because that was basically the definition of styles make fights, 100%. Yeah, once again, I was I was shocked. I did not see that coming. I don't think the, yeah. nobody in the world saw that coming. But just goes to show. I mean, yeah, we can go. Adesanya definitely had a terrible performance, mm -hmm. and uh, Sean Strickland, in my, didn't have a match. Sean Strickland. Yeah, I don't know if you've ended what you're saying because you're lagging out right now, but. Hey, South Africa to the UK connection it is what it is. Just going to wait around until hopefully the uh, connection yeah, fixes. Sure. What's happening? We're good. The internet completely bugged. You were actually paused in a really weird way, but we're good now, I think. All right, all right. Yeah, okay. no, with the, with, the, with the whole Strickland, the whole Strickland situation, like, he, he fought the way he fights. And... Um, Adesanya Ford tried to fight the way he fights, but he looked slow. He, he missed. And what Strickland did very well is Adesanya is not that great off his back foot. And he just kept moving forward, kept moving forward. Yeah. And his weird style against this precise style. And it was, it was, it was so cool to see. And that's why with, uh, with Sean Strickland, like, I think he's a super nice dude. He's actually, I've met him a few times. He's a nice guy. He's a, he's a genuine guy. And he's, guy. A, he's a gentleman. He's not a, he's not an asshole outside yeah. of the ring. At all. Yeah. And, um, you know, I honestly think when we, I think we will have one banger of a fight. I, I think it's a, uh, it will be a crazy fight. You know, fighting, Sean, you know exactly what you're going to get. He's not going to come with some new game plan, or you yeah. know, you know exactly what you're going to get. So, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, I believe that will be a, a great fight. But you know, it's almost it's it's weird right now because Sean is at the top of the division, but it's almost like there's so much chaos happening right under the title that yeah, and um, yeah, well. It's a weird. Yeah, yeah. I would, I would, I would love to fight for the belt. I would love to fight Sean Strickland. I think it would be a great fight, and uh, I one hundred percent believe I beat him. Yeah, one hundred percent. So, how do you, um, how, why do you feel like you have a better chance against Sean Strickland? Because the way I see it is, uh, you got to move forward against Sean Strickland. And in hindsight, again, hindsight, like Whitaker should beat you, but you go out there and piece up Whitaker and finish him. Um, Adesanya should arguably have beaten Robert uh, Sean Strickland. But I guess it was just the forward pressure, not caring, pushing him backwards, not trying to play his game at range. Do you feel like you could do the same, like bring the fight to Strickland in a way that maybe Cannonier did to make it a bit more of a competitive matchup? Yeah, exactly. I think that's what exactly uh, with uh, Adesanya, he likes to fight that that chase match. He likes to fight on the outside and he's going to beat you like that every day. You have to make it a dog fight. Yeah. And that's exactly what Strickland did. And then, of course, that's the same as I said with Whitaker. I'm going to have to make this a dogfight. So once you get that, that's that's a combination for a fight. That's a combination for a fight. And that's yeah. what I believe when when myself and Strickland faces all, that's what you're going to get. Yeah. You know, I'm not a guy that fights backwards. I'm not a guy that fights with on the outside and just throw one shot, one shot. No, I, I go to land those big punches and Sean likes to walk forward and, and throw those punches. But, you know, Exactly what I said. I mean, if you look at the 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 way Sean fights, that's how he fights. So yeah, there is ways to beat him. There's ways around it. And kudos to him. He's a he did incredibly great. You know, he deserves that title one hundred percent. But yeah, uh, I think um, my style, in a in a way, we have a similar style in terms of liking that forward pressure. Yeah. But I just think in in terms of uh, overall skill, uh, yeah. I have more tools. I have more tools, and you know, we haven't seen him wrestling a lot, so it will be interesting. Be I feel like he too. he has it, but he just doesn't like to do it for some bizarre reason because he's Sean. Strickland. Yeah, yeah, I I heard that. But even if you look at the the uh, Abu's fight that he had, he absolutely, you know, in that first round he got pieced up. Yeah. <laughs> Abu was really and similar to just... what you might do to Strickland as well with the, what Abus was doing, kind of. Yeah, throwing exactly, kicks, and that's, and that's the shots. way you throwing the kicks and landing the. He's a taller guy, landing the hard shots, and yeah. he took Strickland down very easily. Mm -hmm. very yeah. easily yeah and but Strickland did get back up though I got to push back he, he, he did, get, did back get back up, up. He, he, yeah. he did get back up and you know but then you have to look at how tired Abus was even in the first 
oh, five God, seconds. Yeah. When he came out for the second round, it was already tired. So you have to ask yourself, you know, in that takedown came later in the round. How tired was he? But you know, that showed. Yeah. If he if he can take you down, and know he did that he did very well by getting back up and yeah, listen, he can wrestle. He can wrestle like we've seen it. He can defend those takedowns, but you know, testing him everywhere, making it a fight where we fight MMA and you know, like when you're fighting at a sign now, you know he's not going to shoot on you. Yeah, and that's true. What I've always said about the sign he is so good at striking, but you know, once he needs to use wrestling, he's not going to be able to. And that's what happened. If he could yeah. sh uh, shoot a proper takedown, yeah, Sean Strickland was standing right in front of him. Yeah, he was on the cage, like standing dead still, right in front of him, waiting for a shot, standing upright. I mean, the takedown was right there. Yeah, like, you could shoot a double leg there, but he can't shoot a double leg, so he couldn't. He didn't have the option. And uh, I believe that's the that's the key to beating uh, Sean Strickland is you don't go out there and stand in the pocket and just throw hands and fight his fight because he's tough and he has a weird style. And you know, you mix it up, you mix it up, you mix it up with with kicks, you mix it up with uh, takedowns, you mix it up with clinch work. That's how that's how you fight Strickland. You go out there and you fight him. MMA. You don't go out there and make a box fight or a kickboxing fight or even just a grappling fight. No, you MMA. You fight every, you use every single weapon in the MMA arsenal to beat Sean Strickland. Yeah. Sounds so weird to say, like, even if you're Israel Adesanya, you can't kickbox Sean Strickland. It's like a weird yeah, world is. in MMA, man. How how now we have to say these things like, like it's <laughs> fact. It's so strange. Um, You mentioned Abba slowing down in the second round against Strickland. Two nostril, Drickus Duplessis is never slowing down in the second round in that way against Sean Strickland. Do you like five no. rounders now? Because this will be like, I think this will be your first UFC five rounder. So now that you've got your nose fixed, how do you, do you change anything going into a five rounder or you just keep that same pace? A lot of the heavier weight class guys just start, they don't care about like the lower weight class. You'll see them feel out a few rounds, but at the higher weight classes, I mean, they just go straight you go out there, it. You go out there and you, and you, and you taste it. I mean, I've had in my career, over 10, I think maybe 12. For five years, I only had five round fights. Yeah. I was a champion, double division champion. So I was defending my uh, 170, 185 and in KSW belt. So yeah. I only had five rounders. And uh, I like to say that I try to feel it out a little bit more, but you no, know, I'm a fan of the banging. So whenever mm. there is a go. Yeah. Interesting choice of words there. Go. Yeah. I'm losing you again. So with the for internet, me, it's, it's uh, good. it's a, yeah, well, no. yeah, we're good. Keep going. Interesting choice of words. Yeah. <laughs> Take it how you will. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nothing will but... strike for ear into Strickland more than those words. He's a fan of the banging <laughs> Strickland. You better be ready. <laughs> oh yeah. You better know, sir. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that is more, uh, no. some of the most intimidating pre-fight talk I may have heard from a fighter there. <laughs> if he were to take it that way. But no, hundred percent. And you know, I've got fighting a five rounder now. I'm really looking forward to it because if uh, I look at the way I felt, the Whitaker fight, uh, the pace was insane. It was an insane pace, and I wasn't even a little tired. I felt amazing in that fight. I felt amazing. You know, that's one thing when you fight a guy like Whitaker and you see, you know, that guy can go all day. He's he's a cardio machine. Yeah. And when we stood up after that first round, I looked at him and I thought, huh, this man's tired. Yeah. And I couldn't believe it because I was, I was going at a maybe a 60 70 percent pace in that yeah. first round just feeling it out and then that second round i just came out and i started pouring on him and i could see in his eyes i could see in his breathing he was getting tired yeah and that's what i always say to people yeah i might look tired but it's i go out there and i put on a pace and you have to match that pace or i'm going to finish you yeah and uh you know yeah you know new nostril two nostril drinkers well, mm. that was my first test run too. So yep. I was really, really happy that it played out because what would I have said if that not, you know, if I got super tired again? But, yeah. You know, that's that's a that's a game, and I felt I felt absolutely incredible in that fight. And I believe if I put on that pace against anybody in the world, they will get tired. Yep. So you beat Whitaker, you TKO him. You're in the cage afterwards. Let's get into this topic now as well. I'm going to keep it nice. Uh, Adesanya gets in the cage and lack of better words, he acts like a, like he's just been drunk for the first time in front of you and just starts unleashing 
I can't even say what he was unleashing you at because I don't want that drama going around. But he was going at you in the cage. Um, how did you feel in that moment when when that all went down? I felt absolutely great because, you know, if you look at a guy like Adesanya, everything he's ever done, is, he tries to be very calculated. Like, you can see he almost has yep. a theme every with every fight. He has a theme. Like, I'm going to wear the dog collar for this fight. I'm going to do yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do this for this fight and he has a narrative that he pushes for every fight and he is so it's always he says you can he quotes some song or some movie and yeah, then yeah, you yeah. know that he follows that now. you know he has this, he an has anime. this whole thing yeah yeah, yeah exactly Something he does like this that. whole thing and when that happened he came out he got into the into the cage and obviously me fighting a guy like one of the greatest middleweights ever you know in terms of what you say, your mentality, your fight, everything needs to be on par because the slightest weakness will be exposed. Yeah. Uh, if uh, because of he has a strong mentality in terms of how his self belief and what he believes he can do, and that's why he always he has his choice of words and he and he and he's very articulate with what he says. Mm. And then he comes into the cage like a complete moron and screams thirty six and me. Yeah. Not even correctly. Not even like, correctly. No, 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 no. Yep. And I started looking at him. And I was like, this guy is so rattled right now mm. that he is saying some dumb shit. He's saying dumb shit. And that was the first win for me. And I was like, oh, you're in trouble. Yeah. The first time you just slipped up so badly. And that was why I was like, go right on. I didn't get any. It doesn't make me angry. I just thought to myself, I can't believe the world champion just slipped up like that. That yeah. was such an amateur mistake to make. Getting out there and acting like I'm calm, but he's so angry. He's like, I want him to win. And then I win. And he's like, I can't believe he won. Yeah. He uh, manifested <laughs> this. I, I think he even said that he manifested. It was his anime mind powers that you know, got what you to was, win over what was my, my, my favorite thing to say afterwards is, well, actually before the fight, I think it was a BT Sports. So he said, I am manifesting Drikas get a first round knockout. Yeah. So he has no excuses to fight me. And I went on BT B- Sports and I said, I know you said that, but I'm telling you guys now, I'm getting a second round finish. That's, That's a statement. What I'm telling you. Yeah. That's he will not statement. decide how I win. Yeah. And uh, I said, uh, just, to sh- just to show him that even my um, manifestation is better than his. Yeah. And that's exactly how I played on that. Yeah. I mean, for me, that was a great, great win because this guy, his anime mindset did not work. Yeah. So you can't no, have an I mean, anime because, guy as the top dog in yeah, the Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, uh, I have no problem with anime. I just don't watch it. Okay, yeah, yeah, true. I mean, yeah, I don't watch it either. But yeah, yeah. Um, I wanted to talk about his mindset. You said he was rattled. He lost, like, composure. He's a very, like, composed fighter in general. Yeah. So I feel like his lack of composure in the build-up with you would have potentially translated to a lack of composure in the cage. What do you think about that? Yes, absolutely. And that's why it's so important that every time you get face-to-face, you win that face-off, you win that exchange, and... Mm. Even if it's just an exchange of words, that doesn't really matter. It's about the body language. It's about the what you say. Even if you are not winning the yo mama, yo mama yeah. battle. 23 That's not what it's about. Yeah. It's about keeping, staying composed and, you know, being like, okay. And being composed is one thing that he's always been very good at in his fights and in his buildups and in his yeah. press conferences. And that was, in my opinion, the first time that he had completely lost it. And I, just, uh, I thought, well, I didn't even need to say anything to win this battle. You did it yourself. Yeah. And true. exactly like you said, that would have, because afterwards he knew it. He knew he screwed up. And if you if you're trying to fix that, what you did, you know, you try right your wrong in a fight. You go out there with some sort of vengeance or like anger, or whatever. You're gonna like you said, it will show in the fight. It will. That exact mindset will show in the fight, and that would be the end of you. Yeah, like if you don't, if you lose composure against Drickus, you're getting, you're getting caught by two nostril Drickus right on the chin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. the yeah. new mythical fighter. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, I wanted to talk to you as well about you said uh, Adesanya didn't really show up against Sean Strickland because, uh, and, and a lot of people said that, even though maybe just Sean Strickland got in his head in the build up, and that could have been a part of it. With the whole thing that he tried to stir up about you, like a simple comment, you are African, and it just really did, like he took that and basically stretched it into the biggest thing he possibly could, in my opinion anyway. A lot of the media's opinion, that's not how it went down, but in my opinion, that's 
seemingly how it went down. You had a little well, there's an opinion, he... and then there's the actual facts that you have yeah. stated. Yeah, exactly. He sort of stretched it into the biggest thing he possibly could. Although it's easy to chalk it up as he's a 12 year old, he's acting weirdly, he's Israel Desanya. In a way, do you think he was secretly under the mindset of, I'm losing motivation as a champion. I need to create some kind of heated drama in order to get myself motivated for these contenders. And then maybe that's what we saw against Sean Strickland is he didn't kind of get what he wanted, which was the big drama, huge fight with you. Yeah, 100%. I think uh, I think that played a big role because, you know, he always gets the fight he wants. He's like, I'm going to fight that guy. And, you know, he almost forces the guys to, even when they are not ready, whatever, take that fight. And, you know, for me, that was a big thing. I'm not going to give him his, his way. Yeah. You know, I'm not more content that I'm going to fight you when I'm ready to fight. And uh, that completely got to him. And then he had this chicken fight. He was almost not motivated because he was like, I'm just going to walk over street and the drink is fight what I want. Yeah. And uh, obviously in this game, you know, at the top of the of the of the ladder, you, you can't you can't underestimate anybody, no matter how good you are and how low they are ranked and how bad they looked in the last fight, you can't underestimate anybody in the sport. And uh, but you know, more than that, I believe that he pushed his narrative and he was losing at his own game. Mm, and that made him that. so incredibly angry. Yeah. And he just started losing more and more fans. He's just because the more he, he screwed up in even after after the face of and everything, the more things he said in terms of you know bringing race into the thing that was absolutely ridiculous. The more he did that, the more people went, "What is wrong with this guy?" Yeah, yeah. And people started seeing him for what he is, and people started seeing what he is trying to do. And I think that got him, even with the strict and fought, the fact that. When he rocked up in Australia, he wasn't yeah. the favorite there. And I know. the fact that Adesanya, like he's that I've done all I all the things I've done and all the fights I've won, and now you guys don't like me. Mm -hmm. And he did that himself. He did that to himself, in my in my opinion, by trying to push the the African thing. Great, push it. I don't care. But yeah. once he brought race into it, yeah, that's where. I, whoa, my man! Now it's now you you are you're playing with fire and you're doing you. I don't know where you are coming from or getting this from, but. I, don't, I wasn't part of that narrative at all. And yeah. he just kept on pushing it and pushing it. And people saw exactly, they looked right through him and saw what he, what he was trying to do. And oh. you know, I'm, I'm glad he, he got what he deserved. Yeah, especially, I, I mean, I hate to go further with this, but for him, I know he can like bring up racial things. It's, it's bad. It's a bad look for him. He's going to lose fans, but it's not like he shouldn't be able to do that. But you being from South Africa, that's like, there could be some real repercussions from him stirring up such a heated racial drama for like a fight between you two, especially because of where you're from in the world, you know? Yeah, 100%. But, you know, South Africa, <laughs> when he, he, he tried to, uh, for him and Ariel trying to bait me. Oh, um, Ariel. I, I, I just go, guys, listen. Yeah. That's how you know I am really from Africa and this is the only place I've ever lived is yeah. because... Nothing you can say can throw me off because I only need to be true. I yeah. only need to be true and tell you exactly what it is. I mean, the South African people, no no matter what color, what race, it didn't matter. The South African people were like, what is this guy on about? Nice. Like, what is Adesanya? What's wrong with this guy? Yeah. And the that's what African, helps you. Yeah. Like, what is this guy? Is he mad? Is he crazy? Yeah. yeah. And a lot of the American population, I believe, and people uh, outside of Africa and South Africa, yeah. they were making a scene of triggers. You can't say that. And I'm like, of course yeah. I can. It's a fact. It's yeah. a fact. Yeah. And as long as you had people in South is... Africa supporting you, I mean, that's how yeah, you can 100%. Keep because, under that, you know what I mean? I mean, it was the people that didn't have a clue what was going on in South Africa. Yeah. That had the biggest to say, like, yeah, you are not, you are not African. You yeah. can't be African. And South African people are like Jukis is, is 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 our guy. Yeah, he's South true. African. Yeah, look at his passport. Look at it. That's the only one I have. Yeah. Speaking of Ariel, you uh, you rebuilt that bridge really quick. I saw you went back on his show after he uh, backstabbed you before. We, we, I went on the show and uh, you know, I, I was a uh, cool see and how from this side. Just gave a few. I, I I gave him a few jabs and he, and he was like. 
two we'll see, we'll see because he's one for one he had one he yeah. was an asshole once and he he was he was nice the second time but you know you have to keep your eye on that guy yeah so you gotta we'll watch see. out for Ariel we'll dude. see but uh yeah with with, with him you know uh, yeah but you know when he said um because he said because my coach made a made a made a post oh, saying he's God, a your coach. Oh yeah. And 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 Ariel said, Yeah, but what do I know? I'm just a butt licker, right? And I said, Yeah, I can't argue with the facts. Yeah, true. It's true. Your coach was really <laughs> and, uh, going at him. How was your coach feeling about the whole situation? He seemed like the, oh, more, my the more heated. <laughs> you know, exactly. Yeah. My coach, he said, he said we main defenses, and I said, We'll see, because um we're one for one in terms of your bullshit interviews and your and one that wasn't too bad. Yeah. And then he said, and with your coach, and I did tell him, listen, you're going to have an easier time mending the fence with me than with my coach. Yeah. You know, he's a, he's a, he's a different guy. Like he's going to say it how it is. Yeah. That's true. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, it was a, it's no matter, you know, in terms of being, uh, him interviewing me, no problem. I'm not going to run away. I'm not doing any more interviews with you. No, I'm not scared of yeah, anything yeah, that he has to true. say. Like you can try, come at me. This is but, probably uh, going to stoke a whole new drama once he sees this interview. He might finally uh, have no, to no, reference no, no, me. No, no, I mean, it was he did what he he thought was what he needed to do, and you know, mm. we had an interview after that, and everything was perfectly fine. Actually, very yep. respectful. Yep, 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 All yep. of that was good. He did. I'm not going to say, oh, he didn't mean it that way. It was a it was a douchebag move. What he mm. did there, what he tried to do there, it was a douchebag yep. move, and you know that's it. But you now we move on. I'm not going to hold the grudge forever. It's. Yep. Uh, no, just no. What you did was it was a douchey thing to do. It was completely stupid. And uh, you know, the second time around, he didn't try any of that of that stuff. So, you know, it's <laughs> yeah, I guess that you know that's uh, what he tried to do. And here we are. You know, you just got to rough him up over. a little bit, Ariel. That's what you got to do. He starts doing <laughs> his little things. Got to rough him up a little bit. He'll learn his. He'll sort of yeah, receive yeah, back 100%, and be nice 100%, again. Hundred you know? percent. Give him some of his own medicine. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um. What what else do I want to mention here? Um, I'm going to be in South Africa, you know, weirdly, towards the end of the year. What? Yeah, I have a friend oh, who's really? a South African. Yeah, he goes oh, there where, every where year. About in Cape Town, probably. No, I'm going to uh, Johannesburg. Wait, where in South Africa? Johannesburg. Holy area. shit, that is like right. That's well, I'm like close to Johannesburg, like a 30 minute drive. Yeah, yeah. I, I've been speaking to Cameron Simon about this. On Instagram. Okay, amazing. He said he's gonna. I'm gonna go on his podcast, do a little thing there. Um. So what are you oh, saying? You teaching well, me out to box? Then, or what? then we'll definitely meet up. Uh, maybe yeah. when you and him doing a podcast, we can. I can join in with you guys. That'll be awesome. To see, yeah. you know, that'd be a good come thing. And check out the. Oh, you're crashing again. I think you've stopped talking. So I think we're good. Are you good? I'm good. Okay, all good. Yeah. So South Africa. I'm gonna be there. And I want to kill two birds, one stone. I'm going to go out there to really enjoy South Africa. Don't get me wrong, but I want to also get some channel stuff for it as well. So you down? For sure. Well, I'm down for both of those things. Okay, sure. Yeah, <laughs> definitely the first bit as well. Cameron wants yeah. me to do golf, but I'm like, I'm not middle-aged. I don't want to play golf right now. Dude. Yeah, well, I, I mean, on that day, I'm busy with whatever else you guys are doing. Yeah, well, well, Whatever else. I'm doing something else. I'm not playing golf. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm going to yeah. be there. And I've had people calling me out for some influencer boxing. So you want to teach me some some boxing combinations or something like that? 100%. I got Don't you. I got ropes. you. Like, we yeah. Can, we have a boxing gym right here. So we can, we can okay. sort that out right here in the gym. Right, I'll come down, get my hands crisp, <laughs> go back to the UK with some hands maybe. That sounds good. That sounds yeah, good. Well, sure. well, and man, just on that note, thank you for, for everything you've done. Thank you for, you know, yep. standing up for what's right. Mm -hmm. and saying it how it is and not how it's supposed to look like uh, it doesn't I seem like the popular thing. take at first but i end up i kind of have to do it in a way it feels right the to thing, do. it's not about being popular or not it's about yep. what the facts are and uh, you're yep. always uh, you know talking completely unbiased and and with the facts and i really do appreciate that and you know the mma world and the media world can learn a lot from that and they do appreciate it it is you yeah. know it's it's awesome to see and I, I appreciate you i mean you have no reason to really back me but yep. you do in any case for standing up what's right. And that's, it's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I just wish I would have picked you to beat Whitaker. That would have been such a better story. If I'd believed in you the whole time and, and then I'm rallying behind you, but I don't know, maybe not. Uh, I, I understand. No odd feelings. Yeah. It's all good. Anyway. Um, I didn't want to, uh, I guess I'm going to end it. I've got like a minute and 50 seconds left before I have to upgrade to zoom pro. 
scammers on these sites, man. I thought this was like an unlimited interview, but I'm getting warning signals all over my screen. So I think we're going to oh, wrap wow. it up there. I think. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you very much for the interview. Oh, my man. Thank you for having me. It was great to finally speak to you. Yep. As a fan of your work, keep on going. And uh, okay. on the way to see South Africa, enjoy. Yeah, I will enjoy South Africa. Don't worry. I've got We've got big plans to enjoy South Africa in many ways, hopefully. So uh, I'll oh, see you there. Amazing. That'd be good. Great. All Have right. a good one, Thank man. Thank you, man. Cheers. Have a good one, too. See ya.